Straight shot, the hardest shot to hit in golf. Do you want to learn to hit the ball straight? Do you want to learn to fade the ball or draw the ball? If so, this video is perfect for you. Hey golfers, it's Thomas Campbell, Master Club Fitter and Golf Professional at Second Swing. Today we're going to learn what happens when you fade the ball, when you draw the ball, and when you hit the ball straight. Specifically what happens to your club path, what happens to your face angle, and what happens to the spin and the distance you hit each shot. Let's face it, it is really hard to hit the ball straight. That is what everyone wants to do. We want to love to learn to hit the ball straight every single time but we're just not going to do that. This golf game is not a game of perfection. We need to learn how to shape the ball in both directions and I'm going to educate you on how to do that. First up, let's try and hit the ball straight. We can then take a look at the numbers and explain why the ball did not curve very much. So first swing here with seven iron trying to hit the ball straight. Check out that face angle, that face to path and club path number. Notice how they're all very, very little numbers. That is going to lead to a little amount of curve. To hit the ball straight, you need to get your face to path number to be very, very neutral. So we take a look at the four shots that I hit here. You will notice that my average club path was negative 0.5. My negative face angle was negative 0.5. So naturally, my face to path number is going to be basically dead neutral. When I hit those four shots, the average feet of curve that I had on the ball was one foot. So basically dead straight. I mentioned it's hard to hit the ball very straight, and it is, it definitely is. But if you work really hard on getting your club path and your face angle to match up, that is the easiest way to hit the ball straight. Your club path and your face angle is influenced by your swing type. So how do you get that club path and that face angle to match up? So ideally, you want to get your club path to be very neutral. If your club path is too far in to out, so that would mean to the positive, What's going to happen is you're going to swing your path out to the right. The only way to hit the ball straight when your club path is to the right is to leave that face angle a little bit open to the target, but very, very straight to your club path. If you wanted to hit the ball left to right, so with a fade, you need your club path to swing a little bit to the left and then leave that club face open to that path, which is going to cause the ball to then curve to the right. If you need to generate a draw, you need to swing your club path in to out, but you do need to get that club face to now start kind of turning over closed to your, your path, which caused the ball to curve to the left. So let's hit some shots where I hit some fades and draws, and we'll take a look at those numbers. Okay, so the first fade attempt, really interesting. If you take a look at my club path, my face angle and face to path number, this is all where it's at. So we'll notice, that my face angle says negative 0.1. So basically dead square to the target. But my club path is negative 3.4. So because my club path was across my body and a little bit to the left, what happens is my face to path is going to be positive. So positive means to the right, which caused the ball to curve to the right. So on that shot, I had 32 feet of curve to the right. So this is as good as it gets with regards to hitting a fade. We'll notice that my club face was dead square to the target on all of those four shots. We're talking negative 0 0.1, 0 0.0, 0 0.0, and 0 0.1. So my average cl club face was dead square to the target. So what happened was, is my club path was swinging to the left. Negative means the left, so on average my club path was about three degrees across my body, which then leads to my club to path to be a little bit to the right, 
which generated 28 feet of curve to the right. So if you want to hit a fade, what you've got to do is you've got to change up your setup a little bit. You've got to take the club back just a little bit differently, and we will touch on that after we hit some draws to explain how I set up to hit a fade and how I set up to a draw. But they, these last four shots, I could not have done a better job to keep my club face square to the target, but have my club path across. That might be a little overcooked. And finally the drawer, my favorite shot in the bag to hit. So you can definitely notice changes in my club path and face angle a little bit there as well. So we'll notice that my club path now is what's considered in to out. So it's positive on average 4.8 degrees to the right. My face angle technically was slightly open to the target, but because my club path was 4.8 degrees to the right, what happens is my face to path number is still going to be negative. Negative causes the ball to curve to the left. So with a negative face to path, I was able to generate on average 46 feet of curve to the left. I do want to just touch on the numbers really briefly and explain the differences in spin, explain the differences in dynamic loft, and we'll just pay attention to see which shot shape will actually go further and maybe which shot shape is actually easier to control. So let's take a look at the numbers and then I'll explain to you how to set up to hit these draws and fades. So my secret is out of the bag. How I hit the ball further with my clubs is because I hit a little bit of a drawer. A drawer is going to go further and the ball is going to spin a little bit less. So let's take a look at the numbers. So first thing you will notice that my ball speed was identical with the straight and fade shot. We'll notice I generated just a little bit more ball speed when I was hitting a bit of a drawer. My club speed was half a mile an hour faster, but I did generate two and a half miles an hour more ball speed. So I generated more ball speed because the dynamic loft on the club at impact is going to generate more ball speed. We'll notice at the other end of the spectrum, when I was hitting a fade, my dynamic loft was higher at 26.4. When I was hitting it straight, my dynamic loft was 25. And when I was hitting a drawer, my dynamic loft was 24.3. So that just means at impact, when my dynamic loft is higher, the face is a little bit open. So my face to path is going to be more open. When I'm hitting a, a drawer, that club face is just going to be a little bit more closed. And that's all that dynamic loft is. Closed club face would mean less loft on the club at impact. Biggest takeaway here is spin. So spin rate will change a lot when you're hitting a fade or when you're hitting a draw. So we'll notice when I was hitting the ball straight, I was right at 6,000 RPMs of spin. When I was hitting a fade, my spin rate was right around about 6,500 RPMs of spin. And when I was hitting a draw, my spin rate was right around about 5,500 RPMs of spin. So basically, when I hit a fade, I spun it 500 RPMs more. When I hit a draw, I spun it 500 RPMs less. And that's going to be interesting because it's going to change your stopping power on the green. So when I'm on the golf course, if I've got a front right flag, the firm greens, I'm going to try and hit a little fade into that fin because I want that ball to stop faster. So we'll look, when I was hitting a fade, my carry distance was 180.3 going 183.6. So it only took three yards to stop. When I was hitting a drawer, my carry distance was 191.7 going 197.8. So it actually took double the amount of time for that ball to stop on the green. That's why I'm able to hit the ball a little further because I draw the ball generally with all my golf clubs. So how exactly do I curve the ball? So first off, the straight golf shot. We want to have our body nice and neutral. We want to have our shoulders nice and square to the target. We want to have feet nice and square to the target. And we want to have a nice neutral ball position with the seven iron. If I want to draw the ball, so if I wanted to now draw the ball, what I actually do is I actually just drop my right foot back a little bit. Naturally, that changes my path to be a little bit more to the right. I also like to move my ball position back in my stance a little bit. So instead of having my ball position just forward of middle with, with the seven iron, I actually just move that ball position just a little bit further back in my stance and close, close my shoulders a little bit. Close my shoulders, close my feet, 
and then I just kind of swing down that club path, which is going to cause the ball to start a little further to the right. At the other end of the spectrum, okay. if I'm trying to hit a fade, it's the kind of the complete opposite. All I'm trying to do is I'm trying to open my feet up a little bit, open my shoulders up a little bit, and now all I'm trying to do is I'm trying to swing my club path down that line. I'm still trying to get that club face nice and square at impact. I'm not changing my club face much at all. If I'm trying to hit a severe hook or a severe slice, that would be a different story. But if I'm only trying to hit a little fade or a little draw, all I'm doing is adjusting my setup. One thing I do add when I want to hit a fade because I am more of a drawer is I do adjust my takeaway. So with my takeaway, normally in, in my normal full swing, my takeaway would be very, very nice and straight back and through. When I'm trying to hit a fade, what I actually do is, I, because I open my body up a little bit, I actually take the club out a little bit more out to the right, so a little bit more out in front of my body. That makes it easier from now for my club path to kind of cut across my body a little bit and then hit that fade. So I hope all this helps with regards to configuration on your setup, on how to hit a fade or how to hit a draw, or just how to hit the ball straight. In the end, we want to make sure that we are influencing our club path and then also our face to path, which will generate the ball to curve either to the right or to the left.